Business brokers like Murphy Business and Financial Utah LLC are experienced professionals that greatly assist the purchase and sale of businesses. Business brokers will estimate the value of a business, advertise it, and conduct interviews with potential buyers. Brokers can play an invaluable role in the process, especially when they team up with a successful business law firm like Sumption Business Law, as they provide guidance, advice, and other legal resources and due diligence that you may need to make the transaction successful. In this insider exclusive Network TV special, our news team meets with Steve Sumption, Managing Partner of Sumption Business Law, Marvin Slovacek, Managing Director of Murphy Business and Financial Utah, LLC, to go behind the headlines to learn more about their successful business relationship and the opportunities for buyers and sellers of businesses. Here's Marvin Slovacek, Managing Director, Murphy Business and Financial Utah. I'm Marvin Slovacek, the Managing Director of Murphy Business and Financial in Utah. Murphy Business is the largest business brokerage firm in North America. Very simply, we help business owners to evaluate their business and then to help them upon the sale. Uh, we expedite the sale and we help them achieve the highest value. Business brokerage is relatively new in the state of Utah. It's not that widely accepted. There's a couple of questions. Why would a client use a business broker, period? Studies have shown that the use of a business intermediary generally creates about 25 to 30 percent extra value over just a, a sale to somebody that they happen to come across. And then we're, we have the expertise to put the deal in front of a variety of qualified buyers that's getting them to step up and pay the very best price possible. And that's what a business uh, broker is paid to do. As business brokers, we work consistently with law firms uh, to help the buyers, to help the sellers, to make sure the transaction is handled correctly. We especially uh, like to work with uh, Assumption Law. Uh, we reckon them, recommend them to our clients. We found them to be excellent transactional attorneys. They understand the goal is to create a transaction while protecting the interests of the party they represent. Not all attorneys look at transactions that way. We appreciate that from Assumption Business Law. This is the Insider Exclusive, live from Utah. my great pleasure to introduce Steve Sumption and Jason Zundel to the show. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you, Steve. We are here today talking about a relationship that you have with a business and financial firm, and we're going to introduce them later, Murphy Business and Financial. But before we start talking about that, you are business lawyers, basically, right? Yes. And tell our audience a little bit about, real briefly, your background and your law firm, and then you can talk a little bit about yourself. We are a full service business law firm with five lawyers, 10 paralegals, and we focus on solving problems and creating opportunities for our clients. We like, what we like is a challenge, Steve. And whether it's a transactional opportunity that has the opportunity for a client to advance its uh, business, expand it, grow it, uh, merge with another company, acquire, or whether it's dealing with problems, uh, disputes between partners or with uh, customers, we like those kind of challenges. And you are the managing partner. You're the one who founded the firm. Jason, you handle transactional matters. What does that mean exactly? That is correct. Steve likes the challenges. I like to avoid them. Uh, I do the work on the actual work on the businesses, focusing on creating the contracts, managing the relationships, and creating a, a future that can be understood clearly, that is guided from the get-go, uh, deleting and removing as much of the chaos that naturally comes with business as possible. Right. Now, we're here today to talk about your relationship with Murphy Business and Financial right? Yes. Brokers. Um, it seems to me that you're kind of like a, a, of counsel to their organization because these people need, these organizations need lawyers 
to review all the legal documents to make sure that they're all, you know, 100% right, correct? Particularly when you have a, a uh, uh, not a full cash transaction, when there is an earnout or uh, delayed payments for a business, that's when it becomes particularly dicey on what are those terms for payment over time. And I would imagine that in some sales that, like for example with Warren Buffett, when he acquires Berkshire Hathaway, acquires a company, he leaves the management in place because his philosophy is, the reason I'm here today investing in your company is you've been running it right. And I don't want to change that. I think that a lot of businesses, they're not a total cash transaction, correct? And maybe the new business owner wants to keep some of the management in place, uh, if not daily of counsel, basically, right? As a consultant, right? Then you run into restrictive covenants, don't you? Where a person, they've got a little money and they said, hey, that was easy. And then we go out starting a competitive business because that's not allowed, right? So what exactly are the uh, issues that you see in most business transactions, Jason? In every business transaction, one of the keys, as you just mentioned, is competition moving forward. Yeah. The two most common, you named one, where it's a cash cow, I want to make money, I want to keep the good management on, and I'm a, a background investor. That's one of the most common. The second is the opposite. I'm a business owner, I'm an entrepreneur, I see a good idea, I see a good opportunity that's maybe being mismanaged a little bit. And I want to take that idea and take it to the next level. But either way, the idea, the secrets, the, the formula being taken over, being bought, the real value needs to be protected. And a business broker just doesn't have the background alone to manage that. And that's why a good business broker will almost always for any uh, high value transaction, involve an attorney at some stage to make sure their client knows that they are protected both, they're finding a good deal, and they're gonna get keep the good deal, keep the value that they're purchasing. Right, you know, there's an old saying, the best money you'll ever see is the money up front. Um, you've heard that. Um, what do you do and what do you put into your agreements where a lot of sales, I would assume, are some upfront money and a percentage of sales over a period of time. But if that business doesn't perform or if conditions, you know, like U.S. farmers today, right, prevent it from realizing the full income that it normally would have earned in past years, what do you implement in your contracts to be able to expedite and protect the buyer of that business? Well. It depends on who we're representing because almost as common, we represent the seller of the business, yes. right? And so they're the ones that need that income protected. The buyer takes it over. They're paying them on the back end based on sales. But if they run it into the ground, it's the seller who's lost out on this baby that they have been creating for 10 years. So is there any recourse for what kind of recourse? If they don't have any money, they ran into the ground. What do you what do you? You can't get blood from a rock, right? Right. And that's why the the do documents that are the basis for this are so important. There are things like personal guarantees that, as you say, can only go so far. If they've got no money, there's no recourse. But if the security is on the assets themselves, if it's on the name, the goodwill of the business, if, this, if the seller has the opportunity to claw those back, you know, he's... He's made at least some money up front. We always, always strongly encourage our clients to do that, to have some sort of protection. And then a year later, if it's been run into the ground, they can bring that back, reinvigorate it, and you know, not end up losing money in the worst case scenario even. Your relationship with Murphy Business and Financial is going on how long now? I would say five. At least five years. years. Five years, okay. What percentage, right off the top of your head, would you say the businesses that you get involved with, the transactions that they're involved with, are franchises? Approximately, I would say 30 to 40 percent. So you know a lot about franchises, don't you? We've, we've a little bit of experience there. In fact, we're just right now, we're working on a McDonald's franchise. And that's one of the very first things they said is, I'm, I'm a very good attorney. I'm not going to be able to do much for you here because McDonald's, this is their packet and you sign it or you don't buy a McDonald's. Yeah, and there are, and I have never read it, but I understand there's penalties. For example, you have to use all of their 
um, their products, you know, from their right. sources, you yes. have to pay their prices. If you deviate from the menu, whatever, you know, exactly. you can possibly lose your franchises, franchise, right? Um, what would you say other than, you know, the most common franchise a lot of people think about is fast food. What is the other popular franchises that you represent people? Fast food is a lot of our experience, especially here in Utah. Um, other, Domino's. Domino's we've done, McDonald's we've done. Haven't done a Subway yet, but fast food is, is our most common. Other franchises out there. Um, restaurants, restaurant chains. Restaurant chains, right. Uh, we've done some, uh, especially in Utah, e-commerce, which isn't the first to come to mind, but there are yeah. certainly e-commerce franchises where you take this area, you sell this area, and that's your focus. Right. I'm um, Steve, and during the last five years, uh, of your relationship with um, Murphy Business, have you, how many transactions, roughly? Oh, uh, 20, 15, 20. How long does it usually take to vet um, each one of these deals, to complete it? To, to close a deal, it can take uh, as little as a couple of weeks. If this is a cash transaction, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we will take a position uh, on a cash transaction, what we will just close the deal. And what becomes challenging is when the earnout or the payments over time are uh, need to be negotiated to allow for that transition. And that's the time sensitive. Uh, we have one transaction that's been going on for now uh, over a year, because, primarily because of the other side, not being able to figure out exactly how they want to structure it and internal disputes. But uh, it, it really can be done very quickly if it's a pure ca cash transaction. Do most uh, buyers of businesses or sellers of businesses go to a broker or a law firm to review their documents? A broker won't review documents. And they say that very, they'll give you their contract. Yeah. I'm gonna sell your business. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a CPA. Yeah. Get one. Get one. Yeah. Preferably both. Do most buyers or sellers of businesses use law firms? And in fact, that's one of the value adds that Sumption Business Law brings is because um, the bigger law firms that every, Holland and Hart and all of these larger, yeah. especially it's too small for them. commercial centric, they're not willing to, yeah. or the buyer's not willing to because they're going to pay as much as an attorney's fees as they are in going to receive. In, in the close of the business, especially if it's seller financed and being paid over time. But we offer that flexibility where we're a small firm. We utilize paralegals very efficiently. We can provide them that protection without taking all of the value of selling the business. Um, we have with us today the managing director of Murphy Business and Financial, Utah, um, Marvin Slavacek. So let's bring him on right now. It is my great pleasure to introduce Marvin Slavacek. Welcome to the show, Marvin. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. You are the director of Murphy Business and Financial Utah LLC, correct? That's right. And what do you do? What's your business do? Uh, Murphy Business is the largest business brokerage firm in North America. We work, uh, we do valuations for sellers and uh, primarily we uh, sell their businesses for them. Yeah. You look, so you have buyers that you look for for their business. We have a, a large cadre of buyers that we utilize, but we also have a number of means of finding buyers. Our goal is to find the maximum number of qualified buyers and let the, the market uh, create the value to find the one who's willing to pay the most. Yeah. How do you do that, by the way? Well, we have an extensive mailing program. Um, we do advertising through a number of the business websites. And uh, we uh, and we have a lot of buyers that we've qualified through prior deals. We'll have hundreds of those. And we use a lot of um, uh, direct mail, industry mail. We look at people that are looking to integrate vertically, horizontally, that uh, this might make sense to them. And put it in a good deal in front of enough buyers, and you're going to get those to step up that really want it. Right. How many deals that you do are franchises? Um, it's a minority. Maybe it's 10 to 15 percent are franchises. A lot of entrepreneurial spirit. People have built a business for 20 or 30 years. and 
they're tired, they're burnt out, they have health issues or whatever, and they're starting, they say, I need to sell. And they're great at what they do, but they've never sold a business. And that way I can bring and add value with, with my background and experience and with the reputation and the strength of Murphy Business. It, uh, it's kind of a, a perfect combination. So how do you evaluate a company? How do you give it value? Buyers are looking for immediate cash flow and then the potential for cash flow. So we look at the historical uh, numbers as far as the uh, uh, how much cash is dropped to the bottom line. We normalize income streams to determine what is a typical normal income stream. Buyers sometimes will run personal expenses through. There'll be one-time expenses, and we try to filter those out. Mm -hmm. And then we look at the growth rate and the, and the industry as well as for them. And we apply a factor to determine what a buyer can and should be willing to pay. Yeah, I've often heard of this factor, you know, like for example, let's say a business is bringing in a profit, a million dollars a year. It depends on the kind of business uh, assigning the right multiple, doesn't, isn't it? Absolutely. So what are some, uh, in the industries, what are some of the industries and the multipli multipliers to determine what the value of the business. We could spend probably three hours talking about that. Part of it's the growth rate of the company. How many years is it gonna take the buyer to get their money back? Part of it's the industry, part of it's the risk factor that they're looking at. If there's very little risk, they can you know, count on three or four years of good earnings and get their money back. If it's a high risk, even if it's high growth, they may say, I don't know what two years from now holds and therefore I can't put up quite as much. So we try to look at the overall economic factors, the micro as well as the micro, macro and micro factors to uh, see what a buyer's gonna be willing to pay. And we've got uh, a lot of databases of comparable sales of businesses, which are not generally available to most people. It's not like a transaction on real estate. Your company uh, created this. We create some of those and then we subscribe to others uh, with lenders and so forth. So we look at what's sold, the multiples, vary across the industry. They don't vary drastically geographically. Those California, New York, Utah, Texas multiples are generally fairly similar. And then with our experience of doing hundreds and hundreds of transactions, we kind of know how to tweak them and what's going to mean the most to buyers in this industry. Right. Uh, can you give us an example of a business transaction without naming the company or the buyer or whatever? Uh, how you valued the business, what kind of business it was, and what happened? Um, well, we've just, uh, a transaction that we've just done is a uh, large HVAC company based in Utah, but they have a uh, scope throughout the Intermountain West. They deal on large transactions. They're very successful. They've had a very good growth rate. And when we looked at the value, we, we looked at the growth. We looked at the consistency of earnings. We looked at the fact that the principles are pretty much staying in place. It's not a uh, you know, not a whole turnover of uh, personnel and so forth. And then we looked at their their backlog, what they've got coming. So we can see deals looking two years into the future and based upon that. And then we normalize their income stream to get rid of expenses that a buyer's not going to incur. They're one-time expenses, they're expenses that are just related to the way it's currently being operated. And then uh, we apply a, a multiple to that number and there's always a range, maybe it's two and a half to three and a half. And depending upon those variables, it'll be towards the upper end of the range or the lower end of the range. Right. Um, with Steve's firm as the legal organization, how does he figure in these transactions? Uh, you know, we've done a number of deals with Steve's firm, small transactions. Uh, he, his firm was involved in this larger transaction, which is in the $6 million range. Right. And uh, So you say to the client, your client, you said, you know, you need legal representation and recommend Steve's firm. Yeah, I'll say, talk to me about your attorney, who you use, and generally speaking, it's not a transactional attorney. Right. And so I'll say, I've got a, a transactional attorney I've had great success with, I have trust in him. I'd like you to talk with them and make sure you're comfortable with them. So it just can't be purely my recommendation, but I try to make sure they have a good conversation with Steve and then with that conversation, it tends to go very well. And do you, run in, do you run into the situation where, you know, executives have personal attorneys, right? And they say, yeah, I've got an attorney, you know, he handles all of my wills and estates and all this, but not transactional, right? What do you have to overcome any kind of hurdles and recommending a business transactional attorney? Uh, yeah, and sometimes we're successful and sometimes we're not. Yeah. But uh, we will indicate that a transactional attorney is different. 
those attorneys, all they worry about is trying to protect the interests of their clients without a transaction, without a deal that we're trying to consummate. One of the things I really like about Steve and his law firm is they recognize there's a transaction that has to be protected. So they protect the, the client as best they possibly can, but there's certain areas you're going to compromise a little bit. And uh, Steve and his attorneys have a great sense of, uh, of what is a compromise that's safe and it's good and the client's still protected and it can keep the deal together. Right. And I value that. What is, um, you represent buyers and sellers. Yes. Do you ever represent buyers and sellers in the same transaction? Yes. You do? Yeah. No conflict of interest. Well, it's a trend in, in, in Utah, it's called being a transactional uh, agent. Yeah. And we have to let both sides know we're representing both sides. We have uh, you know, duties of honesty and so yeah. forth. Disclosure. But, uh, uh, but it's very common in business brokerage, in fact. Right. Most business brokers do not cooperate with other business brokers. So, Steve, I want to ask you the same question. If he's representing the buyer and the seller, can you legally represent both parties in the transaction? Can? Yes. And the key is if it's a purely cash transaction and we're using forms that both sides recognize as being compromise documents that there is an even playing field, not complicating the deal with deferred payments. That's a situation where both side, sides can be advised in writing, seek independent counsel of the risks of such, and there are situations that we are willing to consider that. Right, because I know in the real estate business, uh, real estate brokers have to comply with a lot of regulations when they represent a buyer, when they handle the buyer and the seller. I'm a, I'm a licensed real estate broker for the state of Utah. I've been in several okay. states. And so we have to be very, very careful as well. But full disclosure, and if I have a question, I'll, I'll call Steve. What is your, I'll ask each one of you this, your best advice that you can give to anybody considering buying or selling a business? That's probably different advice uh, for both, but it's to dig in deeply, understand all the facts so you can make an accurate assessment of the, of the risk and the possibilities. Uh, with the sellers, I, we want to make sure that the facts we put out there are accurate, supportable, so a buyer is making a, a reasonable decision. Let me ask you this question. Do you ever have, and you must have, uh, someone come to you and say, I want to buy this business, okay? And they've never operated before. They have no entrepreneurial background. What do you say to them if they have no entrepreneurial background and they want to get involved with the business? Typically, the uh, Small Business Administration is not going to lend them the money they need to acquire the business if they don't have that kind of a, a background. And a lot of these deals are with SBA money. Yeah, there's a lot of money available. Uh, it's readily available. And uh, so that's typically how it goes. Most sellers in this market, they want to get as much cash out of it as they possibly can. And very few buyers are, are willing to come in and pay all cash without a loan because uh, you're borrowing money at six to seven percent and your returns are vastly higher than that so it just makes sense to get good leverage okay and steve the last question yeah best advice i have is to get counsel involved early in the process the highest and best value for a client is in the structuring of the deal so many of our clients will come to us after they have a draft, a, a letter of intent, and it becomes difficult to restructure it so that the problems can be minimized. It's not about a lawyer so much documenting the deal as it is in providing counsel on how to structure that to minimize problems. Okay, well, I wanna thank both of you for being on the show. In five years of success, let's continue that, right? Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at InsiderExclusive.com.